All right, welcome back to a very special episode of the Game or Die podcast. I am your host, Ryan Moore. And today's episode is going to be a little bit uh, quicker than usual. And the reason why is because it's Christmas time. And I love Christmas. It is my absolutely favorite time of the year. And the reason why is not just because I finally live in an area where we finally get snow during the Christmas season. We actually got a gigantic dump of snow on Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving night, Thanksgiving Day was um, a huge storm. And it was so big, in fact, that they closed the highway to our house down. And they also uh, they also had a huge power issue. And so our house was shut down for um, quite a while, actually, with no power. Uh, So (laughs) we actually spent Thanksgiving a day and Thanksgiving night and the day after Thanksgiving uh, down the mountain because we had no power and we could not get home. And I drove our car in the uh, in blizzard conditions, basically going down our mountain, and it was crazy. So I have had so many just things pop up. My wife's birthday was yesterday. Today is our anniversary, and so unfortunately, I just don't have really a whole lot of time to talk about this stuff that I've been doing because unfortunately, I haven't really had the time to do a whole lot. I talked about in the last episode that I played through both Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order and also Need for Speed Heat, and I haven't really had a whole lot of time to game since then. I've done a few things here and there. Uh, One of the things that I've been doing and I've been keeping a consistent basis on every day is Red Dead Redemption 2 online. For whatever reason, um, This game has kind of grabbed me in a a different way than most online games. Even playing GTA V online, you know, just to do the little sporadic things here or there. When when Red Dead 2 came available on the PC, bought it right away, you know, got all the stuff. I was super already in deep into the Red Dead stuff uh, online on the Xbox, but now the PC version came out. And I've just been playing that to death, and it's been fantastic. I played through about 70-ish hours, I guess, so far uh, online, just on the PC in the last month or so, a month and a half that it's been out now. And it's been phenomenal. It's been super fun. And I've been just, at this point, I haven't run run it into the ground by doing every single thing over and over and over again. I'm just playing casually just a little bit each day just to get the daily challenge out of the way just so that I can keep up a streak. So I did a lot of the collector stuff, finding all the tarot cards and the arrowheads and the bracelets and the rings and the brushes and the family heirlooms and the eggs and all this stuff. I did that, you know, last month, you know, right when I got it so that I could build up all my um, money and get all the uh, accoutrements that you would want with one of those games. Uh, And I built my character back up and then I just kind of really didn't have much to do. And then just a couple days ago on the 13th, they release the Moonshiners update, and that adds an entire new role to the actual game itself. And it's actually pretty cool. Uh, Basically what it is is an entire new story mode for Red Dead Online that adds moonshining, Uh, basically like like in the Prohibition area where they would have, you know, speakeasies and things like that. They kind of have this in that, or that in this. And it's kind of cool. And I so basically uh, you have to use your premium currency, the gold bars, the ones that you can spend real money on. But I haven't with buying the ultra edition uh, that was freely upgraded with the Epic Store game or the Rockstar uh, launcher exclusive where they upgraded you to the best of the best edition for free, which Obviously, I'm going to get. I don't want to not have all the 
extra stuff, especially when I'm going to have to rebuild my character. So I got the Ultimate Edition, and I just started playing that. And it was super fun, and I got gold bars. And then you do the daily challenges, and you get a little bit of gold each day for every single thing that you do. And it was, I think, at the starting, when you just do it once, uh, it's like 0.10% uh, of a gold bar or 0.10 gold. So you do all these, you know, daily challenges and sometimes uh, sometime they are a little bit harder. Sometimes they are a little bit more intricate and take a lot longer to do. So I don't do all of them. I just do the ones that are kind of easy or, or that I want to do. And they have, I think, 13 to 14 uh, different types of daily challenges you can do to get that gold. But if you keep your streak going, if you log in and do at least one of them per day, you start getting multipliers after a while. And so now I have like 2.5 time multiplier on my gold bar. So anytime I do one of the daily challenges, I get half a gold bar. And this Moonshiner update, I think, required you to spend, I think it was like 40 gold bars. And I had about 100 or uh, maybe even a little over 100. And then to get your shack, that's just to start the roll, basically. And then to get your shack, you have another 25 gold bars. Again, this can be kind of a pain in the butt if you don't already or you haven't already been playing, you haven't been doing the daily challenges, but daily challenges, you can get several, like 10 gold bars a day, I think, if you have that multiplier and all that stuff by just playing it. And I've already been doing that because it's a game that I enjoy playing. I took a, <clears throat> a last minute job uh, that required me to go out of town this last week. And so I loaded up my... Uh, my game on my laptop and logged in every day at the hotel just for a few minutes after I uh, finished work just to get that, you know, streak and keep it going. And it's not that big of a deal. People make it a way more big deal than it needs to be. But again, it does require you to play. And the Moon Shiner update is a little bit more intricate. It has more things to do. So you know, it, it's really up to you to decide which you want to do, which role you want to do. I have them all because I already had the bunny available. It's nothing to me. And it's just extra content. So it's really fun. I haven't gotten too deep into the Moonshiner stuff just because, like I said, it's Christmas time. I'm pretty stinking busy <laughs> this last couple of weeks. So I've been doing a lot of that. That's kind of my main get home from work, log in really quick, or maybe um, have di cook dinner, um, spend some time with my wife, hanging out, playing other games, watching her play Knights of the Old Republic, which I'll talk about in just a second, and then uh, going downstairs later in the evening and just playing just, you know, 15 minutes or so of Red Dead just to keep my streak going. And sometimes it's not even that. So, like last night, it was clean the gun, clean uh, three of your guns. That takes literally, oh, I don't know, all of 30 seconds to do. So I did that and then I logged off because it was my wife's birthday and we spent the entire evening together. I didn't want to, but I kind of, I, I said, hey, is it okay if I just go play Red Dead really quick to do my daily challenge? She's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to go play uh, Knights of the Old Republic for a little bit. So went down there, did that, went back upstairs and watched her play Nice of the Old Republic. We've been kind of in a Star Wars e ish mood. And I say that with air quotes because I loved Star Wars. I was such a big fan of it when I was growing up and a kid. And, you know, I was the nerd of Star Wars. Uh, I was that nerd back then. I did all these things with Star Wars where. I was obsessed with it as a kid. I read the novels of the extended universe. I played all the video games. I was really in-depth into the extended universe stuff, Shadows of the Empire and things like that. So as of the last decade or so, 
unfortunately, Star Wars has become like this super pop culture phenomenon where the fans have just kind of made it so much more than it actually is, placed so much more emphasis on the world and the lore and the characters than what it needs to be. And it's unfortunately, and this is what I think I just just thought of this just now. I think it's the fact that it's all very base level. It's very surface level fandom that is grown to such a large degree. You ask anyone who quote unquote likes Star Wars and they're quote unquote super fans of Star Wars and they could tell you everything there is to know about the movies. They have no idea about the extended universe. And especially since Disney uh, bought the Star Wars, you know, brand and franchise and they've taken away a lot of that stuff and and made all the extended universe, quote unquote, uh, non-canon, I've lost a lot of interest because that's all the stuff that I knew and all this. And so they kind of split it into two separate sections. And I just learned about this by doing just a little bit of research the last couple of days is that there is the canon of Star Wars, which is all the new Disney universe stuff, the um, new trilogy, the Mandalorian, all this stuff that Disney has produced. That is their now own official canon. Everything before that was retconned. And yeah, I get it. You know, I understand Disney wanting to do their own thing and all that stuff. And saying, yeah, we don't want to, we want to do our own thing and we can't have that with this extended universe already in place. So they made the legacy canon and the, or uh, not legacy, sorry, legends, I believe it's what it's called. And so the legends is all the extended universe stuff that I grew up with and all those stories that I loved and all those characters that were never really talked about, you know, uh, Kyle Katarn and Dash Rendar and stuff like that. So the reason why I'm so down on Star Wars lately is just because of the fandom. They can tell you everything they know about the new canon, but that's all new. That's all stuff readily available that's at your fingertips that takes no energy or commitment to really delving deep into that fandom. The reason why I kind of have a chip on my shoulder with Star Wars is because I took the time to really delve deep into that series and that franchise and learn everything there was to know about it back when I was a kid. I took my precious time, my childhood, to research and you know form this opinion about this series that I love that had a time commitment to it. I spent the time to become a fan. And now everyone's a fan of Star Wars because it doesn't take anything because it's everywhere. It's mass consumer stuff. And I'm not talking about, oh, you know, Big Brother and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not getting into like conspiracy theories or any stupid thing like that. I'm just saying back then it took effort to become a fan of something. You had to really delve deep. The information wasn't there. So it was a time commitment thing. Now Star Wars is like, popcorn at the movies you can just get it and it's there and you know you can consume it you don't have to think about it at all so everyone could go oh yeah ray is you know a star wars character um i i literally couldn't even tell you the other characters in those new movies i've only seen the the one and knights of the old republic was the one of the reasons why i love star wars so much it was such a cool freaking story so my wife loves Bioware, obviously. Our you know, wedding was Mass Effect theme and uh, three year, years ago to the day, basically. And it was just such a uh, super cool story. And so she loves Knights of the Old Republic. She played through it. I played through it when it came out, too. And so we both played through it before we even met each other or knew each other existed or anything like that. And we both love Knights of the Old Republic. So she wanted to play Knights of the Old Republic. I've had it on Steam forever, and so I loaded up the Steam version, and unfortunately, uh, the Steam version is kind of broken. (laughs) Um, 
the, there's no controller support. Uh, the resolution stuff is all jacked up. You can't really play it in uh, 1080p or anything like that unless you start doing a bunch of weird driver installations and uh, messing around with INI files. And so I did all that stuff for her and uh, gave her the controller and loaded up uh, Controller Companion as well, which is a really cool program for playing any PC game that was never updated with controller support. You can actually just map everything, but it takes a while to configure. But Controller Companion actually is uh, on Steam and has Steamworks. So basically, people can create their own profiles for random games, you know, in any game you can basically think of that doesn't have um, uh, built-in controller support, and you can actually just download it by the click of button. So that's what I did. I clicked it. Uh, download. I got someone's profile that they made. I made a few changes and I handed her the controller and she started having some just issues. She didn't like it. She wanted to use the keyboard and mouse. And so we did that. And I was like, all right, well, cool. And, and she just had an issue with playing that stuff. So I just said, hey, it's on Xbox, it's backwards compatible, you know, we have an Xbox One X, so it's enhanced on the uh, One X, you know, and it looks actually pretty freaking good, and it plays exactly like the original uh, Xbox game. So we started talking about it, and uh, she, I got it, downloaded it, and she started playing it, and she just loves it. So I've been watching her play a lot of Knights of the Old Republic. And I very, very vaguely remember just a few minute details. I know the twist. I know the uh, a few main characters. But it's, it's just a different game than from what I remember. And it's really cool watching someone else play it. So I've been doing that. Uh, she's been playing that. I've been watching her. And that's kind of really about it, unfortunately. There are a few other things that uh, we've done over the last month or so, or a couple months, The Outer Worlds. I think I talked about this on one of the other podcasts, but it's basically Fallout with some Mass Effect stuff and, and located in space, and it's just a really good game. It's not phenomenal, but I don't think it needs to be. It, it is a game that takes all these little things from other games and does it extremely well and puts it together in a really good all-in-one type of package. So we played through the Outer Worlds together. She made choices that I would have never made. But that's what's really cool about gaming with your wife is, is watching someone else play through the game in a different way. And so we had a really fun time kind of semi-co-oping that game. Um, it is interesting because it's Christmas time and there's not really a whole lot of games coming out around Christmas time this year. And even just throughout the, this entire year, it's been a very weird, weird, weird year for games. So Halo Master Chief Collection, which I think is a dumb name. It's always been dumb. It's a stupid name. And half of the games now in that collection aren't even uh, with Master Chief. They should have just called it the Halo Collection. Would have been perfect. It sounds pristine. It sounds, or not pristine, prestige in a way. It sounds kind of elegant and like, hey, the Halo Collection. That's going to basically encompass everything, right? And it's not unnecessarily wordy. It doesn't sound stupid. It's just a very nice way of saying, hey, here's all the Halo games in one box set, basically. So Master Chief Collection finally came out on PC. And they're doing it in a backwards way. Um, none of the Halo games are able to be played on the PC right now. It is only Halo Reach, which is DLC for that collection. So the collection itself cannot be played. It is only the DLC of a game that just came out. They, they launched it with this, and they said, all right, Halo Reach is finally playable, but you can't play everything else that's been readily available since, what, 2014? It is, oh, 343 sucks. 
They're a crappy studio. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care how much you love Halo. They butchered that game. Oh, it's so hard to make games, blah, blah, blah. No, they're, they're getting paid, and they've been working on the same game for however many years it's been. They can't even finish something. This The Master Chief Collection <laughs> is in beta. That game retailed and came out, and now they reversed it back into beta for some stuff. Like, come on, get a freaking grip on your studio. Make some proper choices and say, hey, we can or cannot do this. We're working on this. Here you go. They should have never m- launched the Master Chief Collection in such a broken state. And I don't even think it's that broken, uh, to be honest. But also, I'm not playing every single match or mode or anything. I played a little bit of Halo 1 on the Xbox when it came out. And I went, oh, this is kind of cool. Updated graphics. Halo 2, oh, updated graphics, cool. And I think, and then I never played Halo 3 on it because I already played through that when it came out in 2007. So, oh, all that to say, 343 sucks. But they finally came out with the PC version Halo Reach. And it's actually really, 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 really cool to have a freaking Halo game during Christmas. Because that's one of my favorite memories of just the whole Xbox franchise. When the Xbox launched, or when I got it, I think I got the Xbox a year after it came out. It was like uh, 2002, and it was my graduation present, basically, because I graduated early from high school. And um, during Christmas time, it was, (laughs) I almost think it was December 17th, (laughs) which is funny because that's also my anniversary. But it was one of my favorite memories it is getting my Xbox, opening it up and messing around with it and playing Halo for the first time. I played it by myself. I didn't have friends around or anything like that. And I played Halo all night by myself. And it was so rad. And it was during Christmas time. So I had Christmas uh, music going and playing in my room and stuff and holding the Duke controller and going, man, this controller is huge. <laughs> And just loving how much of a computer the Xbox really was. It was a Pentium 3 processor. You could load Linux on it. You could mod it. You know, it had RAM that you could solder to it. And I was doing all this at, you know, 17 years old. So it was really, 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 really cool. And I really liked playing Halo. I'm not the biggest massive Halo fan. I don't read any of the books. I'm not into the lore. I couldn't tell you. I think Guilty Spark is the little robot, the little, um, you know, Wheatley robot, basically, (laughs) that follows you around in Halo 1 and 2, maybe? I know the Arbiter is David Cage, or not David Cage, wow, sorry, um, Keith David. And uh, I've played all of the mainline Halo games, except for 5, and I played through most of Halo 4 with my friend Sean. We gotta finish that, dude. Um, Man. We got to finish Halo 4 just so that we can, you know, play through other games. I really want to, I really enjoy playing Halo with Sean too. Sean, my, my friend Sean, um, we have built a lot of our friendship around playing games online. He's one of the only people that I play online with. Um, I think he's the only person I really play online with. I played with my friend Jeff. I played uh, with my friend Brady a little bit, but that's about it. Sean and I are, Sean is my online video game buddy, basically. And so we played Halo 3 on live when I lived back in Colorado. I lived in Denver for a year in 2008. And Sean and I really just had a major connection with just talking and hanging out and shooting the crap, you know, and and just building our friendship up over playing Xbox Live. And that's what I think is really cool about video games in general. You can build relationships with people you normally maybe wouldn't have or someone who just isn't around physically in the same location. You can play online together and talk. People talk on the phone all the time. I very rarely talk on the phone unless it's for business or just talking to my wife saying, hey, all right, I'm coming home. I'll I'll see you in a little bit. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye. Other than that, very rarely talk on the phone. 
So I don't talk on the phone with my friends. I text my friends or I play online games with my friends. And it's just a really cool bonding experience. You build up your relationship with people by just what you're doing. You know, that's the whole human experience, if you want to say. But Halo Reach, even on, if it's on PC or Xbox or whatever, I never played it past the first 15 minutes, maybe, of that game. Uh, it was at a time when I was building or, or, or I was working at Games For You, the video game store that I managed. And I had no time to really play Halo uh, during that time when it came out. And by the time it came out, uh, or by the time I had time to play that game, I just didn't have the want. Plus, again, I'm not a big Halo fan, but it's always nice to come back to. It's kind of like gaming comfort food in a way. So I sat down, I loaded up Halo Reach on, on the PC, and I had a blast. It's very different. You know, it's definitely a 2010 game. And it feels like it, but it's not bad in any way, shape, or form. It's just fun game. It's a fun game that you can just always go back to and just have a fun time playing through the campaign. I haven't played it uh, with anyone yet, but I would like to. And like I said, I really hope Sean and I someday finish Halo 4 because I never played through that. He was the one who got me to get back into Halo in the first place. He's like, oh, we got to play Halo 4. I'm like, ugh, the 343 one? Eh." And he's like, it's not that bad. Come on. And so we started playing through it, and I think we got a good chunk of the way through the game, but we just never finished it. So hopefully we could play that. (laughs) But I really like having a Halo game around Christmas. It just brings back nostalgia, you know, in a way that is fun, but I'm not latching onto. I'm just going, man, this this feels good. I like this. So that's pretty much it. I haven't really been playing a whole lot more. I load up uh, Forza, uh, Forza Horizon 4 on PC every day as well. And that's because they're doing another daily type of thing. But this only requires you to log in and click a few buttons so that you can get the free car for the day that they're providing. And I think that's super cool. I love when games do that. Now, that game came out last year. It was on my top 10 for last year as well because it's a really good car racing game. I like car racing games. I'm just not into the simulation version. I don't like Gran Turismo, but I do like uh, the Forza Horizon series. I don't like Forza Motorsport. Because it's, it's, again, more simulation. But Forza Horizon, man, they, they kind of go, hey, here's our bombastic, more arcade type of style of racer. And so I loved playing that game. And then I saw an announcement uh, at the very beginning of December, just like December 2nd or 3rd. And they're like, every month, uh, every day in the month of December, we are giving away a free car in the game. So all you have to do is load up the game. Click this button and you will get the car for free instead of spending your points or whatever to uh, the money in in game to buy it. So I've been trying to do that as much as I can. Um, I'm not home all the time, uh, especially this month. <laughs> so I've missed uh, quite a few cars, but I've gotten a good maybe ten or so out of them. I maybe missed a week altogether so far, and it's just really cool. I'll, I'll play. You know. I'll, driving around in the world for maybe a couple minutes, maybe doing a um, little uh, objective here or there if it's close enough to the spawn point. But, man, that game's good too. (laughs) So that's all that I've been playing. And next episode, I'm going to do my whole top 10, you know, game of the year and really go in depth into all that stuff. And I've already talked about a lot of those on these podcasts, you know, but this will be episode 19. So I'll do a full like fun, you know, cram together. Let me talk about my favorite games this year. Just again, to have fun with. So before I leave, there's one thing that I like to do. I, I, I don't do a whole lot of Christmas traditions and mainly because of my life is so busy and so just up in the air all the time that sometimes I just don't get around to the thing that I want to do that year. And so 
I, I don't put a whole lot of weight into Christmas traditions. I put a whole lot of weight into being around friends and family and just creating memories, talking with people, hanging out with people, watching things with people, cooking things with people. But there is one thing that I, I really like to do <clears throat> as much as I possibly can. And that's my main Christmas tradition that I've held for years and years and years, decades at this point. Ever since I was a little kid, I would always stay up as late as possible on Christmas Eve. Not just to wait for Santa or anything like that. It was always to play games. I always played video games on Christmas Eve to wait for the moment that my parents woke up on Christmas morning so that I could go downstairs and open up all my presents. So I created this kind of tradition in my mind of playing games on Christmas Eve as long as I possibly could. When I was younger, I would stay up all night, all day, uh, Christmas Day, and do a ton of stuff. I would basically start my Christmas Eve day hanging out at home because I was a kid with my parents, doing some stuff, maybe cooking, and then I would ride my bike to uh, the bookstore. And this bookstore was about... 15 miles away? I, I don't know, honestly, exactly how long it was, but it was, um, we lived in a gated community as a, as a kid, and I would ride my bike all the way through the gated community. The gated community wasn't small. It was, it, it's basically a city in and of itself, or a town. So I would ride my bike all the way to the gates, past the gates, and then into the shopping center outside of the gates, which was maybe a mile or two out, or no, man, shoot, I'm misremembering that. It was even past that. It was a couple shopping centers out. So I would ride my bike for maybe an hour or two to go to the bookstore. And it was uh, called Super Crown Books. Super Crown was this huge bookstore before the conglomerates of, you know, Borders and Barnes and Noble. And then Borders died too, which was sad. But it was this big bookstore that had a couple chairs, uh, a couple little benches. And I would go in there and go to the video game section. They had all the video game magazines. They had all the video game guides and things like that. And I would sit there and read video game guides and take down notes because I didn't have the money to buy the guides. You know, these guys were kind of expensive. They were like 20 something bucks. And, you know, I was a kid back then. I was, this is way before I had a, a, a license to drive or a car or anything. That I was 12. 13 maybe. <laughs> and so I would always go to Super Crown on Christmas Eve and just sit down and take notes and read all these books for all these games that I wanted to play or was playing or hoped that I would get for Christmas. Then, you know, when the store was going to get uh, start closing or something like that, I would, you know, leave, ride my bike home, and then I would stay up all night to play video games. And it was just something that I did as a kid. You know, I had a sister, but she's seven years younger than me. And so we didn't connect on that level, you know, we, and she was much younger than two. So, and she had a bedtime. I technically had a bedtime. My parents were like, eh, it's not that big of a deal, especially during Christmas. So I would stay up all night playing video games, all night playing every single game, trying to beat a game, maybe. And that's kind of what my tradition turned into as I became an adult and moved out and um, didn't have anyone around, especially when I lived in Colorado. So I played a game. It was called Kingdom for Keflings, uh, to, uh, Christmas of 2008. And that game was kind of life-changing in a way. It It is my favorite game of all time to go back to for relaxing time. You know, people will always ask or email in, you know, podcasts and say, hey, what's your favorite chill game or whatever, your comfort food game or whatever. And Kingdom for Kathleen's is like probably on the top of my list because it's just one of those games that I have such fond memories of. There's nothing. Um, uh, there's no antagonist or anything like that. It is you building stuff and having fun. And I played that all the way through. It took 17 hours, I think, somewhere around there. Maybe a little less. I don't know. It could have been seven. It could be more. It could be less. I don't know. All I know is that Christmas Eve of 2008, I sat down and played through that entire game during Christmas Eve 
into the morning of Christmas. But I was alone on Christmas that year, so I didn't care. You know, I could stay up for 24, you know, 30 something hours and not talk to a single person. (laughs) So I had a ton of fun doing that. And I kind of started making it kind of a tradition. Every year I would stay up super, super late into the Christmas morning and play and beat a game. And I, I kind of made it like, hey, I need to beat this game. I need to beat this game. But once I started, you know, getting into um, dating my wife, you know, and spending time with her and her family. And then when we got married, you know, because our, our anniversary is so close to Christmas, it's less of a priority, but it's something fun that I like to do. And so we kind of do that now together, which is really fun. And one of the things that we've been playing through, and like I said, I talked about is we play through the Zelda series and we finally beat Majora's Mask, but we haven't moved on to Wind Waker yet. And there's a reason for that is because we had to finish up Overcooked 2. <laughs> Overcooked 2 is fantastic, but it's a little more needlessly complicated than Overcooked 1 was. So I played Overcooked 1 and loved it, especially playing co-op with my wife. It was so fun, um, you know, trying to work together as a team. But Overcooked 2, once you get into the later levels, they make these levels less fun. It's just frantic and just more frustrating than anything else. It's because you could get really good scores and do all this stuff, but I, I just, I got so, it got so hectic towards the end levels that I was just like, dude, I don't know if I want to play this game anymore. And we kind of put it down for a little bit because I would always get frustrated. Um, Not with her, not with our co-op work, but just with the game itself and the way the levels were designed. So we put it down. And once we beat Majora's Mask, finally, then I was like, oh man, we need to play Overcooked 2. We need to finish it. I want to get it off my Steam need to beat list. So we completed that. Just a few weeks ago, just a couple of weeks ago, I think last uh, oh, about two weeks ago, and we've been so busy, and I've been on on um, uh, at work, you know, out of town, so we haven't moved on to Zelda: Wind Waker. But now we have Link's Awakening remake on Switch, and I was like, shoot, I really want to play that. It looks really cool, and I remember playing the Game Boy version, you know, back in high school, and really loving it, but I never finished it. So I want to play that. So hopefully, maybe we'll either play uh, Wind Waker or Link's Awakening remake on Switch for our Christmas, you know, Eve hangout, you know, stay up all night until Christmas morning or, or super early, you know, or super late at night or whatever it is. But that's kind of my Christmas tradition. I'll probably talk a little bit more about this on the next episode. Maybe. I don't know. Um. But I just wanted to record something because I, I've i been playing some games that I really want to talk about, and I didn't want to lose any of the memories that I've had for the last couple of weeks. Take notes and things like that, but you can only do so much. But thanks for listening. Uh, I really enjoy making these podcasts. I hope you enjoy listening to them. I don't always put you know a bunch of production value into anything, but... You know, it's Christmas time and uh, hopefully I'll put some Christmas music in here because you can never have too much Christmas music. I don't care what anyone says. Christmas season starts November 1st. I've been listening to Christmas music since November 1st. My wife texted me the day after Halloween. And she's like, I'm playing Christmas music. It is the best. I'm like, I am too. <laughs> I love Christmas. I know some of the music can get repetitive and boring and there's uh, people out there who don't have, you know, the families that love each other. And it's such a bummer. So Christmas is is a very special time of year. You know, the weather changes, it's freezing, it's snowing, hopefully where you are. And, you know, it can become so much more than what it should be. Christmas is turned into very consumer me 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 my 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 i i i i have to get this i have to get this and especially with thanksgiving too the thanksgiving is a day where we come together as families and be thankful to god about 
the things that we were given in life, the opportunities, the people that we have, the relationships, the food on the table. We are thankful. And then immediately, everyone's like, no, you need to go out to a store and you need to buy. You need to spend your money and you greed, 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 greed. And it's such a bummer that it's turned into that. And it's always been like that since I was a kid, but it's turned more and more. Remember when Black Friday wasn't a, a saying? No one knew what Black Friday was until yeah, maybe about 10 years ago, maybe about 15 years ago. It was only a backroom, you know, retail environment speak. And it became lexicon. It became a phrase that everyone started using because they started using it in advertising. And remember when Black Friday sales uh, started opening morning of when the store opened normally on Fridays. Now it's turned into, and then it started becoming Friday, you know, early, early morning, doorbuster sales. Uh, Our stores open at five o'clock in the morning because we want to give you good deals, but you want to give us money. And that's what we want is your money. And then it became So much more. And then it started creeping earlier and earlier and earlier to the point where even several years ago, Black Friday ads were airing all on TV throughout Thanksgiving saying, hey, you need as soon as you're done with Thanksgiving dinner, go go line up and uh, come to our store. We're opening at midnight. So technically, it's still Friday. So you're not spending all your time your Thanksgiving night at the stores. But now it's on Thanksgiving. And now, and this has been years where Black Friday sales happen early November or late October. (laughs) Come on. Just get a grip on reality for a second. Take a step back. Realize why we celebrate these seasons and celebrate these holidays and events. It is about loving one another and also talking about the actual reason for the season. Jesus coming down and, you know, sacrificing himself for us. So it is something that everyone needs to actually stop and think about during this Christmas season. Why do we celebrate it? It's not consumerism because Black Friday is also turned into not buy stuff for other people. Now it's not even that. It's, hey, here's a good deal. You should get this for yourself. And that's all Black Friday is now. So I've kind of sworn off on buying stuff during Thanksgiving, day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday weekend, all that crap, because that's not what this season is about. That's not why we celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving is not to buy ourselves stuff. And I'm very, very guilty of being super selfish, especially when it comes to deals online. I would do that all the time, but man, I just, I I implore you guys. I know it's already past Thanksgiving. It's almost Christmas. Stop and really think why you're buying the thing that you're about to buy. Stop and think about why we do the traditions that we do. I know some people, you know, like to celebrate Thanksgiving with their families in line, you know, during the Black Friday sales. And, you know, it's a bonding experience for them. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But, always realize why you do the thing that you do. So I hope you guys can just take a little bit. Sorry to get so heavy. You know, again, it's my podcast. I can do whatever I want. Uh, But thank you for listening. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas and Christmas Eve. Spend time with your family. Spend time with the ones that you love and really cherish that. Don't go into those seasons or even someone's house when you're going to a holiday party, a Christmas party, a Thanksgiving party. You're spending time at someone else's home or you're inviting other people into your home. Don't think when can I go home? Because again, I'm guilty of that too. You know, I always go, man, I just I wish I could go home for a little bit. I I don't want to be around people sometimes. It's okay. But cherish those moments because we're, we never know when we're not going to have them again. So thanks for listening. I will have a much more upbeat and crazy Christmas top 10 games of the year uh, podcast for this next episode. And 
That's going to do it for me. I've been your host, Ryan Moore. You can find me online on Twitter at themadman007. Or you can just visit my website, gameordie.net, and look at all the stupid crap that I write because I, I've been writing a lot lately and I'm going to put up my uh, top 10 list sometime soon-ish, hopefully around Christmas-ish time, maybe a couple days before Christmas, depending on how much uh, writing I get done in the next week or so. So thank you for listening. I will talk to you next time. Just the same Driving home, driving